Hello, listeners. Welcome to the Dream Stream Podcast. I am Yiska Cook. And I'm Ellen Ronis. And this is going to be a little bit of a Halloween ruckus. Is that what we called it? I got like a handful of 13-year-olds who are dressing up and, and they may be walking by. Waltzing through our podcast, Waltzing gracing through. us with their ghostly presence. Yeah, they're, <laughs> they're being like horror horror movie, um, like killers. <laughs> we got a couple of horror movies. <laughs> awesome around here. <laughs> that should be really. Oh, well, that should be fun. That I'm usually fun. an Indian queen or an Indian princess, India, Indian, and um, but I guess we people say we can't you know copy other cultures or whatever they say I get, I mean, silly thing. yeah I used to be I wasn't very imaginative I was like either a a gypsy yeah. <laughs> you know with the thing over my head and the yeah. whatever you know or or, or, or an Indian yeah. like a Native American Indian okay. with like because I always had long hair and I put yes. gray in and yes. feathers and, you know, who knows what else I wore. But like, those were the two things that I, I related to. So I wanted to be there. And I, didn't I think that's that. beautiful. It's a beautiful way to celebrate another culture. Yeah. You know, if you aren't too thin-skinned about it. I mean, I'm sure, you know, these days it might be like cultural appropriation and right. they might be like, what do you do? You know, whatever. I, I understand that. <laughs> but in those yeah. days... <laughs> whatever it was innocent <laughs> I really I think what, what it was about it was I related to their culture why else would I want to do that exactly why else I want to dress as an oh, Indian exactly. girl I was uh, yeah I was dressed as an India Indian uh -huh. um, like like princess I had this gorgeous dress that someone had given me from his shop in Northampton Massachusetts and and it would put you know the little the third eye and then yeah. I never did it to misappropriate is that what you said I never did it to misappropriate yeah right of course I, not well, I, mean, I, I think did that, it out of out of respect and right well um, like we're connecting with something in that I think yes we're connecting with a vibe you know but whatever I don't know how <laughs> so how's your dream life well, you know, it's pretty juicy. I, I, last night it was one of those, like, uh, where was my journal in the middle of the night? You know, like I, I remembered something and I was like, uh, oh, it's good. And then I, you know, I didn't write it down and then I didn't remember. Um, but I did have, I have a dream from a few nights ago. Okay. I should just jump in. And sure. I'm going to read because I don't remember all the details. So, um, I'm with my friend Andrea, who's my friend in San Diego in an institutional cafeteria, like a college cafeteria maybe, with lots of people. And it was very crowded, I remember. It was like a lunchtime. We were walking towards the food line and I was telling her that I was thinking about, you know, what I wanted to do in my life and, you know, how I wanna feel in my life. And, you know, kind of that conversation that I've been having a lot with people in the last mm -hmm. bunch of years. And, um, and she suddenly like falls behind while I'm talking. She kind of falls behind and falls into this other group of people, young, young, youngish people, and very lively, and they're all connecting. And and I realize that she's not with me anymore. And I turn around and I say, Why did you leave me? Like, what what was that all about? And she said she was tired of hearing about all that. And, <laughs> and I felt I I need I felt shame and needed to get like I felt shame that I was like, Oh my God, I'm still talking about this. And my even my close friend is like enough already enough. enough already with that stop so, <laughs> so i so i i'm 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 feeling shame and i need to get out of there so um the urge was like i need to get out of here and make art okay thing i need to get out and make art and i ran into the streets which were like suburban very suburbia you know the houses next to each other and apparently i had the keys to two different studios that were supposedly mine but they were in somebody's house and it was nighttime and the lights were all on from the inside and i and i'm like i can't just go into even though i have the key i can't just go into somebody's house and go in their house in wherever the studio was in their house it's just like i just felt like i couldn't do it um and 
yeah, they were like, they were occupied by whoever lived there. So I guess like different time of the day, I could have gone in when they weren't home, but in the evening they were there. Um, and I felt an, like an urgency, like a real urgency to make art. Like it was like, I have to do this, like almost a panic. It was almost like a, an actual panic. Yes. Um, and I felt really super disappointed that I couldn't do it. Um, yeah, that was it. I felt really disappointed and really kind of like freaked out that I couldn't get in like panicky almost. So that's the feeling in the dream. Is it the same feeling as when you woke up? No, the feeling when I woke up was interestingly more about the art making part. Like, yes. like, okay, let's see if I could put this in a feeling. Um, like when I was joking about enough already, that is kind of how I feel. Like, I am on that exploration. What am I going to do with this next part of my life? How do I want to feel in my life and create something from that? You know, that whole exploration and it's very valid. But um, I think what the what I felt when I woke up was that I'm tired of, not necessarily talking about that, but I'm tired of um, talking about it like I have to or I should instead of like, this is just, my life is unfolding and it is taking as damn long as it's going to take. And there's no should, and there's no shame. And, but so there was like, I kind of woke up with a little bit of that shame feeling. And then like, no, I'm not going to feel that way. I think, I think the fact that I was needed to go make art about it, about the way I felt actually felt really good. I felt really good. It's like, yeah, making art is the way I express myself. It is a valid form of, you know, whatever, like self-expression, um, way to process things, therapeutic, you know, visual. So it's, you know, it's, it was almost like validating art as a, a valid thing. Yes. So, so let's, let's do a reality check. So is anything from that dream, um, in waking life um well my friend was my friend yes. <laughs> she was the same friend um and the way I don't think she would have like left me like that but she's very very social okay. extremely extroverted social person so she would like interrupt a conversation to like go say hello to a group of people so that's kind of a reality check. That's kind of re real, real thing that could happen. Yeah. Um, you know, the college cap, it felt like a college cafeteria certainly could be real. It didn't have any very specific um, connotation for me in my life, but certainly could be, mm -hmm. you know, a, a place that exists. Um, the people all seemed like normal, you know, normal, whatever that, you know, right. People. <laughs> yeah. um, the actors in your dream. The actors in my dream were all sort of, you know, yeah, people. <laughs> People that could exist, but nobody that I specifically knew except my. <laughs> I said extras. Oh, extras, extras, extras. yeah, <laughs> yeah, extras, right? The extras, I, I, I the actors. <laughs> the extras. The extras. That's great, though. I love that. The extras in my play <laughs> that I created in my. And you know, the outside. You know, it, it did seem very much like a sort of a wealthy suburb. Um, in the, San Diego, the things were incongruent. The, you know, the the college campus cafeteria, and then the the um, suburban, you know, street. And and interestingly, in, it was light. It was like daylight on the in, in the cafeteria, like we were doing lunch. And then when I ran outside because I had to go do art to go to my studios, it was dark. It was evening. Wow. So that's kind of interesting. I think there's a lot of interesting symbolism in that's these. That's very things. interesting. Uh, I don't know exactly what that means, but. Um, yeah, so the houses could have been real, you know, again, nothing, there weren't like houses I knew, but there was nothing uh, obscure about them. They were just okay. very, you know, normative houses on a on a suburban street. Yeah. So if this were my dream, I might think that I'm, I'm racking my brain again and obviously talking too much in my own head to myself about what will my contribution be? What am I gonna do? I have to figure this out. How am I gonna style you know, the rest of my life? And 
uh, feels very urgent. And I, but I do know I just need to do art right now. And that's really the only thing I feel that can help me. And to me, that's the great answer to my query. What am I supposed to do? Oh, I know what I'll do. I'll do art. Well, there you go. It's right on, right on. I mean, I really think in a lot of ways, this was a, a practical dream, right? Like, yeah. you know, there was some oddities, but mostly it was pretty practical. It was like, yeah, you need to just get into the part of you that's like the more feminine essence, right? Like having to figure it out feels very masculine. It feels very like yes. patriarchal. We've got to figure it out. We got to make the rules and the law. Yes. That's how you do it. And you take the steps, you know, and it's like, that isn't working that well for me. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I have a lot of, you know, judgment about myself in that exactly. realm. And that's what I feel like, you know, if I am, we always do this every character in my dream, both animate and inanimate. And if this is true, then I'm, I'm not only myself lamenting to my friend, I'm that friend have yes. to listen to myself again. Yes, <laughs> yes. Like, are you really saying this exactly in that way? That's so hard on yourself. Are you saying that again? Right. Are you saying the same exact I've heard it over and over? Hmm? I've heard it all before. I've heard it before in exactly the same way. So it's like, yes. you know, it's like, it's like, boom, boom, boom. Like knocking yourself over the head yes. every time I say that exact same thing. I yes. need to, I should, I need to. And it's the same line. It's the same words. Yes. So I think, yeah. And, yes. you know, my friend, I don't know what, uh, you know, like I like to, like if I'm her, right? So yeah, she's like, yeah, I'm not going to be mean. I'm not going to be mean about it. I'm just going to kind of veer off and go with these people because they're kind of more positive or they're having a little fun. mean. They're younger. I don't know. It was a little mean. It kind of was a little mean, but it wasn't like, yo, bitch, stop <laughs> talking. Not that shit you know it wasn't, it <laughs> wasn't like toward me, me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I don't yeah. know um well, I love that yeah me yeah. The, the question and then the resolution mm -hmm. I need to do art just to help calm myself down but art is my answer as well Yes, art is the answer, right? It's like getting into the flow state, getting into a meditation, putting putting my energy on the on the page in whatever way that is. Yes. Um, and the other thing I want to say about just occurred to me about my friend being mean or not being yes. mean. It's like, uh, oh shoot, I lost it. Wait, hold on. Um, sure. Say about that. Um, maybe not mean. Um, I could fill this space a moment. Because when we were talking about the extras, you know, in the movie set, I was thinking, it flashed to like, who are the random people in our photographs, mm -hmm. you know? And then I was like, because it's so interesting when we dream about indescript people. And now are those people that I have passed on the street? Are they lurking in the back of my photographs? Like, who are the, who yeah. are the extras? Yeah. Yeah. Do you think about what you were going to say? She's mean and nice, or is she, she nice? Mean. Or... Oh, what was I going to say? It was something about the way she was being that didn't feel mean. It felt, oh, it felt honest. Okay. It felt honest. Oh, okay. Like, if I'm going to be with myself around this question, it's like the honest thing is, I, I don't really want to be with this. That's right. This isn't working for me. That's like true. over and over the same thing. It's like being in a relationship with someone who you have the same argument, the same disagreements. You don't, you're not going to, friendship is not going to work. Like, why am I doing this to myself? This doesn't feel good. Yes. So it's like, so it felt a little bit like that, but not mean. It just felt like really honest. Like this isn't really working. So I'm just going to go over here and take care of myself. So if I'm her, you know, I could say that. Okay. But, um, yeah. So tell me, do you mind pausing now on interpreting that dream or exploring that dream and hop to a dream that I had? Because sure. my little boy is in the shower and I know he's going to have something to say about this. So, okay, quick before he gets out. I so I had a dream that I was at some kind of a evening party. It felt more like evening than night or even lunch. And mm -hmm. um, my, my ex high school boyfriend John is there and I was feeling very flirtatious with him and then it was almost like choose your own adventure 
So do you remember those books? When I was little, they first came out and I and I think they're doing them again, which is they say, if you want to, you know, be with Katie, go to page 35. Or if you want to be with John, go to page whatever. And then you flip around. And anyway, it was similar to that because it was like many boyfriends passed. And I think even ex-husband passed. Are all I could have? It could have been. It could have been any of them. It was like uh -huh, my uh -huh. right. Oh, so I could turn the page to you know, and um, and so, um, sorry, my son just came up. There. So and that was just really so interesting to me, and um, and and the fact that oh, and one other thing I wanted to say about it is, do you know with animals, whenever animals sleep together they need to be touching mm -hmm. they want to be touching yes. and you know I have a kitty that I spoon with it gets right up against right up against my stomach so um so I just think that that is how I felt in this dream when I put my hand on his hands I just felt like I needed to be touching him mm. I felt like I needed that closest and it could have been anyone in the past that I was and it just wanted it to be my first love hmm. how did you feel in that sounds sounds delicious to me it's, it took me a little bit because I I knew I dreamed about him but then I always think it's the ex and I wasn't sure who who was who was this masked man I thought he was masked but um and then I was I was happy about it mm -hmm. uh, I was nice. thinking something about we got together when I was 17 you know mm -hmm. something about well first love first yeah. love is just so beautiful you never forget the the, the first cut is the deepest you know that song it's true <laughs> and um you know and uh, so I was thinking about that um but I was also thinking about who and where I was at in my life and that's when my mom was first diagnosed with breast cancer okay. like seven years before she died and um and that you know boyfriend was the only one that I told at that time or he he was the first one that I told my best friend kind of thing and so it brings me back to that time of, um, you know, knowing, knowing that, you know, hard, hard times mm -hmm. were in front of me when I was 17 mm. and I was right. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, well, let's go back, uh, to, is there anything that you need from that or would, is there something you want to know about it or? Yeah. I mean, cause it felt so much like, you know, and I don't have that much in my life except with my kitty. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's more than I have, by the way. <laughs> I, know. I don't know what I would do without him. God, I, yeah, I'm sure. There's the best. So, and, and, you know, of course for elderly people, not that I'm putting myself in that category. No, no but um, yeah. You know, that that's probably the most, and you know this as a massage therapist. Yeah. You probably speak on this more clearly that that it seems like the thing that elderly people need most of all is is touch. Yes, absolutely. I mean, I think it's just a human need that a lot of us just don't get enough of. of. And that is one of the values of massage is people get touched. Exactly. There's many, many benefits, obviously, but that's not the least for sure. Not the least at all. And I experienced that myself too. I mean, I receive body work and it's just like, it does satisfy that need for, for human contact. It really does. But it's too bad that we, yeah, just don't get more of it in our lives. You know, it doesn't even have to be in a romantic way or sexual right. way, just, you know. So yeah. um yeah. So let's go back to your dream for a little bit. Yeah. Come back into this. So um 
Is there anything you would like to know or what would you like to know from your dream? Um, I guess. Um, let's see. I'm curious, you know, since I feel like we, we kind of know a bunch about, you know, it already. Mm. I am curious about the part that feels like I'm in a college, you know, or some kind of institute, yes. college type, you know, cafeteria. So that's always curious when I'm in, I have a, like, I have in my lifetime had so many dreams where I'm in college, um, like so many different weird kinds of things. Yes. About, can't get to the right floor or the right building or, yes. or it's like, it's just, I kind of, in my mind can remember so many different dream, dream imagery from right. like, I, I had a fellow dream worker, Joyce Granger was her name, and this was over 10 years ago, and she was in her 70s, so she likely has passed on, but she used to dream all the time about being on a college campus and in, in a green environment, and I just think that was such a special time in her life that her dreams often brought her there. That's so, so that's special to me. Okay. Uh, it was a little bit vague to me, my whole college time. I mean, I, I just, I didn't know what I was doing there. I wasn't really, um, I don't know. I, I was kind of depressed, I think. I guess I would probably say I was depressed during that time. I really didn't know what I was doing there. Like I wasn't necessarily yeah. preparing for a, a career that I wanted to have because I didn't know what yeah. that was. I still don't know what that is. <laughs> but, um, I think you did but Maybe that's why it's college because yeah, I did have that feeling always. I mean, I was I studied art in college, and so because just because it's kind of what I was good at, it's what I gravitated towards. But I didn't want to be a commercial artist. Right. I knew I couldn't possibly be like a fine artist and make a living. It just I wasn't motivated enough. I yeah. wasn't, good enough, you know. I mean, whatever that means. But I didn't feel like I. You just said I wasn't good enough. Yeah, I didn't feel like my art was not. It wasn't really like, like, oh, this isn't going to show in a gallery, but that's how I felt at the time. Yes. I was a kid. Well, you know, what was I making art about? I mean, it was new to it all. So I just, I didn't have that kind of like uh, passion for it. Like, oh, I'm going to be a fine artist and I'm just going to be in a studio and paint. I knew I had to make a living, you know? So it just I, none of it made sense to me. It was just like I was doing it, but it, I wasn't. So would I say that I experienced anxiety in my college years? Yes. And uh, anxiety throughout my life. Yes, for sure. Because you specifically were talking about, you know, the, this anxiety dreamer was having of not knowing what will I do. And then best friend slash dreamer also <laughs> is saying, I don't want to hear about this anymore you know, all of your self-doubt and, and telling myself this. And it's time for me to just be bold and be the artist that I am. Yeah. yeah. And then may maybe in the next dream, I'll actually yeah. have keys to my very own studio. Yes. Instead of like a studio that's kind of in there in someone's home. And there's all this like, thoughts about how I have to get in and when I can get in. Oh, and interesting. There's two. Two. Two studios and two different I, homes. Yes. I know that was kind of interesting. That's I want really interesting. You know, it's like, okay, so here's what it, here's what it makes me think. Like I have a choice, but the choices both seem like the same. It's like it's almost like how I feel in life. Like I keep going mm -hmm. sideways moves. You know. I learned this a long time ago. Wherever you wherever I go, there I am. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Say that. I, I say mean, that. I know that sounds stupid and funny, but 100% I mean, true. My sure. theme song was You're running and you're running and you're running away. You're running and you're running and you're running away. But you can't run away from yourself. You can't run away from yourself. So that was literally my theme song. And then discovered, oh, but there you are. You can't. Yeah, it's so true. We, we are who we are. Always with you. <laughs> exactly.
Well, and it also makes me think of something happening in my waking life, which is like, I rent, I rent a studio to do my body work and I share it with someone. We share the room. So she has it half the week and I have it the other half of the week and it's been working just fine. And we also share a suite with another two people who should also share one room. The different space, second space. Like a second space in like a, you know, there's a common room and then there's these two rooms and there's two in, in each room. Okay. And it's been you know, for several years I've been doing that and it's been fine and good, but I'm noticing just little things happening and people, you know, doing things without checking in with the other members of the team, you know, the group yeah. us and not bad things, but just things that are, you know, it's like make, it's starting to make me feel a little bit like, like I don't belong there. Like I don't have... Things are happening without me wanting them to happen necessarily. Things being changed, decor, vibes, both scheduling, vibes. that kind of thing too. Scheduling issues. Not so much scheduling issues, not at all, because we're very clear about I have these okay. days. That's not an issue at all. But it's like, and so some things with my actual room partner, and then some things with the other person, one other person who's, you know, just she's doing what she does and being who she is and it's not even that it's anything new it's just suddenly it's starting to bother me yeah okay a lot of smoke in the space you know like sage and th or whatever you know? oh yes okay that's what she wants to do for her healing practice i don't bemoan be bemoan her that begrudge her that whatever the word is well, um but, but it really bothers me it makes me have a sore throat like i can smell it through the vent and it you know and all just little things noise factors like she gets on me yes. about she makes no you know whatever just little stupid things that on the scheme of things we're all good we all like each other and sure. no how if it's for my situation it's so masculine of me trying to solve your, your feminist situation <laughs> i would get a fan and ask her to please put no, no, no. I'm, I'm so way beyond trying to fix the problem okay. like that i'm it's like it's okay i've been living with it i can but it makes me really feel like I need to move on. Yeah. Okay. And that might be good. But I'm not ready yet. Okay. <laughs> I don't, you know, I really don't know what I'm, what I want. So I have to really just, so I think that that's part of maybe the college, you know, being on a college campus also is like higher education. Yes. Can you hold that thought? Sure. Hey, okay. Lev. Yeah. There's a Halloween bag. It was right here. It's right here, honey. It was right here this morning. Yeah, look for it. It's right here, I think. I'm so sorry. Just getting my 13 year old ready to oh, tear down the town. Totally. Such a big thing when I, we were kids. So, New Pops is a huge festive village on Halloween. This is nice. a big uh, festival in town and Everybody has a parade and they walk from the middle school down the road. And then uh, after the parade, they have um, the Munster family orchestra. They're <laughs> and they're kooky. No, that's okay. the Adams family. It's the Adams family orchestra. <laughs> okay. And then they have, they have uh, the night of a hundred pumpkins at the bakery. So everybody oh. walks from town down Church Street to the bakery, and there's a bunch of guys sitting there with this incredible drum jam, and the bakery is giving away hot cider and um like like cake, like lemon cake oh, or whatever, yeah. pumpkin cake. What's Did that? It's not the bakery in the Rose. Bakery. Right Rose. Down, yeah. So that you they go from New Pulse all the way down 32 to the best a long walk. To the bakery? Oh no, the bakery is right in town. Oh, not, the bakery, not, not the one. She, sorry. Okay, not the. I uh, know. I was thinking of the one in um Rosendale. Oh, oh, the alternative baker. Oh, baker. Oh, that's, <laughs> but oh. I do like his baking. But okay. um, but it's it's just a bakery. It's right on Church Street, right downtown. Yeah. And people go there and look at. They have all different categories and jack o' jack o' lantern curving contests. And one year, I think when he was about eight, my son won for the classic Jack, uh -huh. you know, contest, which it was just a classic Jack o' lantern, missing teeth and with a big smile. Great. That sounds like a lot of fun. Sounds like yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm a little bit like not so into Halloween. I mean, yeah. 
if I like, I'm the kind of person who I either like hide in my little place behind, you know, like I don't have to get on camera or anything because I'm in the back, you know, house. Mm -hmm. uh, or like I either do it or I don't. That's the bottom line. And when I do it, I do it good. Like I would have a fantastic costume. Like yes. I don't do in between. <laughs> I don't like put on a hat and then pretend I'm dressed up in a costume. You know what I mean? Hey, love, please put on your mask and come. Are you leaving? I love you. Have fun. Bring me back chocolate. <laughs> what is he dressed as? I didn't look like he was dressed as anything. He has a mask and a knife, and he's Jason. Oh, okay. Halloween. And then he's got his other friends or other horror movie. <laughs> and then he becomes 13. <laughs> oh boy, perfect. <laughs> what else are you gonna be, right? Back to my dream, please. Yeah. Mind, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm a little skipping around, too much coffee. Um, I, I Something for me, it had to do with first love. And, uh, um, and we were, we touched on that a little, but um, you know, I I'm very lonely, and mm -hmm. I'm very much I'm trying to manifest finding true love. Pretty clear, I never want to legally be married again. I don't need that shit in my life, but uh, lo love wise, yes, uh, and so I'm trying to manifest him. So hard to manifest him when you don't even know what race he is and what how tall he is and you know I like flip flip around like a like he's got you know cappuccino skin and he's maybe he's Asian maybe he's, I don't know I don't know well you know I'm cur I'm curious about something around that like the whole manifesting thing I mean I really yeah. believe in like that you know like that law of attraction thing that we vibrate yeah. under so, but the, like, if we're thinking of it like that, okay, I'll just say, I prefer to think about it like that rather than like going, oh, I want him to look this way or that way. Cause I mean, how many people are going to look exactly this way or that exactly. way? Exactly. That's why I'm trying to leave that open. Yeah. And just I be don't like, have how, any... how about that? How about, how do I want to feel with this, with my mate, with my love? How do I want to... Okay. I want to that's feel. what I need to do. I want to feel. I know how I want to feel. <laughs> I want to feel, I just want to feel cherished. You know, when my husband used to be my boyfriend, he couldn't get enough of me. <laughs> he was flirtatious and fun and, and you know, and then, and then he wasn't. <laughs> and then years and years later, let, you know, your relationships change. But it's true. How did I feel with my first love? I felt Oh, he was just everything to me, you know? Yeah. yeah. I went to Syracuse after high school. He went to Arizona State University. And so, and then I realized, so I, I need to be living westward. So then I transferred to Boulder, Colorado, but I used to see him because he was just in, you know, Tempe, Arizona. So um, but I remember that, feeling like like life was all ahead of me it was that feeling of you know and I told you I did have great sadness around that time also but as we often say yin yang you know great great sadness with my mother's illness and then also it was you know deep love however deep my love may have been at 17 right right whatever you're capable of yeah 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 I think yeah so that's you know maybe right just feeling how you know in terms of the dream like how you felt just touching that person you yeah. know oh. remembering maybe like what it was like to be with him and how you felt and that that's what you want to manifest being cherished being loved appreciated you know safe yes all safe. of the above <laughs> yeah. you have to be safe in yourself you just do you have, to, you, you have to feel safe no no question and that's yeah. why i don't want to do any online dating i've just seen too many you know romance scams i'm not interested oh I'm, yeah i i didn't even scam that. me bro <laughs> yeah there's a lot of that but i didn't even mean that but there is that but i just meant like safe like kind of safe 
personal safety. I want to feel like I can just be, ah, oh, I can breathe. I, I can, can just be my life. stuff. I can be so myself and in, including the kooky things and including the anxious moments and, yes. and good. You're just holding space for me. Like that feels safe. Yes. Easy to find, you know? not easy to find for any of us yeah not easy to find but so you know, then, that's my story it's not easy to find maybe right? so other you know so I can I can rewrite that story maybe so I'm trying to see like like how many times does 17 go into my age 53 so let me see four you're so wonderful for doing it in your head I I probably could do it in my head if I wanted to. What am I doing? Fifty like three and a half, three point something <laughs> divided by seventeen. Anyway, what, three point one one seven six four seven zero six. And what's the point of of that? Um, I just I said there's all sorts of things like there's times in one's life that are that parallel or that mirror other times in one's life and it's in astrology right there's a certain amount of years that reflect so i'm just by wondering. the way how old are you 53 okay oh you're so young oh my god i didn't realize you were 10 years younger than me nine wow okay so you're my friend dara's age um yeah so you're not even in your you're not even in your second saturn return yet but you're getting there i get a second saturn return no Absolutely. Oh gosh. Yeah, when you're like, um, let's see, what is it? 58, 58, 59-ish, between 58 and 60 is your Saturn return. I could tell you exactly if I knew if I have your exact information. I have right. Um well, you I have something <laughs> interesting. Sorry, go on. No, I was my thing is my computer is dinging and I hope you can't oh I don't I hear the dinging. Hear it. Good. Okay. And I and, hope you can't hear the dryer. No, I can't. <laughs> Uh, well, I just want to say this very interesting thing that I never grokked. I just never got it. So I was born in 1970, mm -hmm. and my ex-husband was born in 1961, and his father was born in 19... Uh, 1932? No, 1934. Which Okay, so his adds up to seven, and my ex adds up to seven. And my older son was born in 1997, which also adds up wow. to 17 when you break it down. You know, seven plus nine, 16, and then six plus one is seven. And of course, 1970 adds up to... So it turned out that for whatever age any of us is, we're all the same combined age. So right now I am 53, so five, six, seven, eight. My son Phelan is 25. Oh no, he, he was, he just turned 26. But when he was 25, uh, no, okay, he just turned 26. So sorry, listener, I know this isn't so clear. So I'm, I'm 53, I was born in 1970. Five plus three equals eight. My son just turned 26. Six plus two equals eight. My ex-husband was born in 61. And uh, he'll be 62, so that adds up to eight. And his father was born in 34, and he'll be 80, and that adds up to eight. So every year we are, we're all in the same numerology, nine, yeah. nine digit. Yeah. So I have no explanation but i sure have been wondering well, listeners, if any of you are mathematicians or yeah, have no, thoughts about it numerology i don't really know i yeah. don't know what numerology but it you know that's how people do it you know so and but yes. there's you could check it out you know to go i to bet we have a numerologist in probably. our in our audience yeah, probably right maybe let us know <laughs> Yeah, so, well, thank you so much, Alan. This was thank wonderful. Thank you so much. I yeah, appreciate being able to talk about that dream. It feels, yeah, it feels good. Yes, good, good. Like, your dream too, like just imagining touching, just having, oh. touching that love, touch it, it's touch so, it. It's so funny because any anything I watch on YouTube, anytime two animals are sleeping by each other, they want to reach out and be touching each other. 
absolutely no matter if it's a duck and a cat or like you know whatever animal it is and um and with my boy my um my big black cat puma he's he really loves me but sometimes he loves me so much he's kneading me with his claws and I have to like say no I have to like pick his hands up and then I just end up just holding his little pad with my thumb we all tans and we fall asleep that way it's oh. just the cutest thing and so this felt like that a little bit like I was holding his hand yeah just enough connection to feel like you're not alone that's right yeah, yeah maybe that's maybe it's kind of like a bridge the dream is like a bridge to the next love it's like this is the old oh. love and you're not intertwined right you're not intertwined in the dream you're just just touching hands mm. so maybe it's like okay we're st like somehow it feels maybe like a bridge oh i like that and uh, and that makes me think also it's give and receive Give uh -huh. and receiving mm -hmm. yeah 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 awesome so much in the dream world so, so much juicy 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 so did i tell you last halloween i had a gang of high school hooligans come and steal all my chocolate what i did you mean I, I this year i'm doing it differently of course, you know, my, my friend Donna gave me the suggestion, just put a couple pieces out at a time, only because I'm slow and I won't be able to make it to the door I see. for I see. everyone who rings the bell. Right. I still want to leave candy out for the kids. Mm -hmm. Right, right. They'll just take it. <laughs> so, so, rude. so rude. Oh, my God. Someone needs to teach them some manners. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Well, listeners, we we'll wish you all a happy Halloween. The Great Pumpkin Halloween. Yeah, I thought that was the Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown. Christmas, I thought that was the Christmas song. <laughs> yes, it may be. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> but um, thanks again, Ellen. It's great to see you. Welcome. Yeah, you too. And um, happy Halloween and day of the veil being the thinnest in the western world and yeah. that's what halloween is really about yes Connecting with ancestors and you know it that have passed so my ancestors are all pictured on my top shelf huh? dad and mom and nana and papa up and nana and papa that's nice i don't have pictures of i have pictures one picture of my dad but yes. there's a lot of people who have passed in my life that I don't actually have photos of, yes. um, but they're in my heart. And um, right. yeah, I do. I feel like it's a really great time to actually connect with that energy yes. of, you know. Oh, well, let's asking, try that. Yeah. Asking for connection from our, from our loved ones who've yes. passed, um, those in the world of ancestors or whatever anybody believes about that. I believe it. Yeah, de los muertes. Absolutely. Coming right up. I, what is it november 2nd or something and it's all the oh, same time. it's, it's the, same all the same thing and yeah. it's no coincidence it's still happening during scorpio <laughs> oh, absolutely <laughs> no it is no coincidence <laughs> i just had a conversation with my neighbor she's 81 years old and she, and she's also i'm a pisces sun leo rising scorpio moon she is a pisces sun Leo rising and Scorpio moon. So she's 81 and I'm 53, whatever. I don't have nothing. As I said, I don't know anything about it, but we have the same, we have the same major planets in our charts as each oh. other. No, it's really interesting. I mean, that's it's really interesting. A lot of similarities. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So cool. spooky. <laughs> Spooky. It's spooky. Your okay. chocolate not be stolen from your door. <laughs> so, <laughs> Ellen, thank you, dear. And sweet dreams to you. For the mood, Mr. King.